Okay, I want to show you a new glaze combo uh, that I tried out the other day and I really like it. And uh, this is going to be a little bit longer video. I've had requests from some viewers to actually see me doing what I do and putting glaze on. And I don't normally do that because your time is valuable and I try to keep my videos short, but once in a while I'll do a little bit longer one. And uh, this is a really neat combo. I'm really happy with it. I'm calling it mint chocolate chip, but I'm gonna show you how this works. So uh, bear with me here. I've got these soup bowls that I made. These are really nice. And uh, yeah, they have my signature little, I always put a peace sign on a lot of my handles like that, most of them. And uh, if you ever find a piece of pottery that says G-Dub or G-W with a peace sign on it, that's something I made. But you'd have to be probably in Northwest Arkansas to, to find something like this. But what I'm using here is the PCF 74, which is River Birch, and it's one of the flux glazes. And I really like this one. Uh, there are a bunch of them and uh, they're just growing on me like crazy. But I start out, as you can see here, I just, I've got three of these done on the inside and I'm gonna put a couple of coats in here. Try to make sure it's fairly clean. I mean, I just load the brush up, get them in here. I usually have a heat gun. I, I have failed to get that down at this point, but I'll grab it here in a minute. But as you can see, this, this river birch, it has these specks and those specks will melt and give you a real neat effect. I don't know what the specks are. I'm sure I could go find out very easily and you could too with a Google search. But uh, they do settle in the bottom. I've been at the bottom of one of these jars and you talk about heavy specks. Well, you're going to get it at the bottom. So you really want to keep this shook up. I've been sitting here for a while working on a couple of things. So I'm going to give it another shake. See the bottom right there? They settle in there. So you really want to keep this river birch shook up. I don't know how much of that I can get out. Yeah, she's it's starting to free up a little bit. The more of it you have in your glaze, the more you're going to enjoy this, this particular glaze because it's just, it really has a neat effect. I have some bowls, which I just put up on the shelf that have that on it. And I'm going to do some more of these. But again, I'm just putting this on. And I know, yes, I'm supposed to let it dry completely, but sometimes I just don't follow directions very well. And, uh, in my younger days, there would be a few officers around that would tell you the same thing. That, well, he wasn't following directions, so that's why he's here. But uh, that was in the past. Now I'm an old man making pottery in the woods and sharing videos with you. And I do wanna thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the comments. Uh, I get comments occasionally, I get likes, and, and I like to hear feedback. And this is, I, I'm making this video because of some feedback that somebody gave me saying, hey, would you do one of these and let us see how you do it? So there we are. That one's on the inside. I'm going to push it off here and let that one dry. And then I've got one here that has dried pretty much. I think I'm going to do one more coat on this. because I want to have plenty of this flux glaze on it. The flux is going to make the other stuff run uh, and it's going to make it all come together. And I'll show you a finished product here when we get this done. And I know if I could hear what you're saying, it's going to be oohs and ahs because I posted these out to my followers on uh, I'm on Instagram, Healing Earth Ceramics, and I'm on Facebook as Healing Earth Ceramics. And I do post a lot of my stuff out on Instagram. So if you wanna follow me out there, just look for Healing Earth Ceramics. And you can see a lot of stuff that you're not gonna see probably here on, uh, on, on 
YouTube, because I don't post everything out here. But anyway, all right, we've got another coat on that. Now we're going to do the outside. I hope that's, you guys can see this. But it's starting to, starting to really get fall here in Northwest Arkansas. And uh, while you're watching this, I'll tell you a stupid story. We had made a plan today that we were going to, my wife and I, we were going to take a drive south uh, to wine country and look at fall foliage and, you know, see the beautiful trees and then have lunch at Weedeker Wine and, you know, just have a really nice day together and enjoy ourselves because we had to leave early this morning to go to the eye doctor. And we've been planning this for about a week. So this will give you a clue. You don't have to be real smart to be able to do this. <laughs> I'll show you how dumb I am. Uh, last night we both realized, and she brought up, that hey, how are we going to go do this? Because every time I go to the eye doctor, they they dilate my eyes. <laughs> We're both looking at each other like, how dumb are we to plan an entire day around a trip to the eye doctor, knowing you're going to be wearing two sets of Ray Charles glasses? can't see, a lot of times makes her sick to ride in a car, and it's like, okay, well, change old plans. So she's inside sleeping, and I'm out here making a video to share with all of you, and she's doing quite well. Anyway, I am going all the way to the bottom with this. I will grab my trusty heat gun. I've had these fail on me. I really should have an, a spare. Because the last time one broke, I went and bought this one. And I wish I'd have bought two. They're pretty cheap. You can get them at Harbor Freight or different places without spending a fortune on them. And I'm going to need my handy Shimpo wheel. That I love so much and I brag on and I'm going to show you one of these bowls that's a river birch bowl and I have Albany slip brown around the top so you can see how it ran and where it sits, they turned into more spots like that, but where you've got an, a, a little bit of an incline that really runs. And it's just a really pretty glaze. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna add some color to these that I'm working on right now. I love it, I love it. Uh, I have one of these that's really big. It was about 13 inches across and I had actually donated that to uh, an auction for a public library. And it will be sold this weekend at a, at a fundraising event. And it was actually one of the nicest pieces I think I've ever done. And when they asked for me to, if I'd be willing to help, I thought, hey, that'd be great. I'd rather give you the best than the worst. So here you go.
Okay, so you can see that's 95% dried up there. Then I'm gonna flip it over. I use these, I put a lot of things just on my hand when it's dry and I'll finish it up. And again, I know, I, I think I may have shown this, but I cut this little groove and I wish you could see that better. It's just right on the edge. And that's what I go to. So it looks like I go all the way to the bottom, but there's a little bit of a slant right there. And if you're new to this, these little groove, these, these grooves I put in here, they really help. And this is a runny glaze. This will help stop it. It'll run and hit, run and hit and run. And uh, so maybe when you're trimming, this is something you might consider is just trim some little grooves down here and you won't have so much problem with things running off the pot. It's kind of a trough that stops it. But then where this bottom is flat, I just don't know if my camera's gonna pick this up, but where the bottom is flat, right there, I put just a little bit of a cut in it that makes it flat here and then it comes up. And, uh, and you can see it, it almost gives it a, looks like it's floating. It has a little bit of a floating effect there, so. But it lets you take the glaze all the way down. But when I took uh, my first classes from a, a wonderful career artist, not just a potter, but that was one of the things that he taught me was that little trough will just save your life so many times if you cut that in there when you're trimming. And he was right. And I am grateful for his experience and his willingness to share things. And I love to share stuff with you guys that I had to learn the hard way. I started this, I may have mentioned, and I don't know, uh, I had a head injury that really knocked me out about 10 years ago, the TBI from a bicycle wreck. And uh, part of my recovery, I got into the clay arts. And I did this, I did this when I was 17, okay? That was many, many moons ago in school, in high school uh, for one semester and then that was all I did. But I accidentally stumbled into a coffee shop that had a pottery studio in the back and uh, took a few lessons and then did some time in another studio, just some of you may do studio time where you pay a flat fee and then you can go in and use wheels and clay and everything for a while. And that works out really good too if you don't have a wheel or the ability to do this at home. Uh, look around at your local studios, get on Google Maps and find a local studio and go meet up with some other artists and enjoy that. But that's how I got started in it. And then when COVID hit, I bought a wheel so I could do it at home because the studio closed down. And uh, how should I say yada, 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 the rest is history. It, uh, it got into where I do it more and more. And then we moved out here and built this new house and my wife was encouraging me to build this little studio that I work in. I was fretting about the money and she was fretting about me not having a studio. So she won and I am grateful for her and her wisdom. And we both share this space and she does work out here with me some too. She, she enjoys glazing. But there, this is what we've got, okay? Got this really great little pot. It's covered in river birch. We need to dry it up a little bit, and I'll show you the rest of it.
I'm gonna get a little bit more of that river birch on here because I just don't wanna to be too thin with it. And you want at least two to three good coats of this on there, you really do. And you can go different directions with it to make sure you've got good coverage. Sometimes do your brush strokes around, then do them up and down. It'll keep you from seeing so many weak spots uh, where you went one direction and your brush didn't quite get in certain spots. So that's just a, a healthy tip from me and Amico. Go in different directions. Go up and down, go around. Get in that handle. Sometimes handles are where things will run, where you've got that vertical, well, they'll get away from you there. So you definitely want to have a way to stop that. It'll run off into the, onto your shelves if you're not careful with it. All right, so we're going to get that lip real good. And for those of you that uh, kind of know what I'm doing here, you can just fast forward to the end and, and see the results. And for those that want to watch and see the whole detail, uh, this is one of my first longer videos where I actually do this. If you can see where this is sagging, it's kind of thick right there where I wipe my brush off, you're gonna get a lot of run there because you've got so much more of that flux glaze, but it's not gonna run off the pot, especially with your grooves on the bottom. It's just gonna give you some real pretty runs. Okay, so we've got that dry, and then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move on to a couple of color glazes. And this is what I'm doing. I'm doing textured turquoise. We've got PC25, and we've got Wasabi 43. And textured, textured turquoise will run quite a bit sometimes too. I always like to wipe these lids off. They tend to stick. And so I guess I'm an anal potter because I know a lot of people that have this really dirty studio all the time and I just can't do it. Uh, I think I was raised where I needed control and so I like to have things tidy and uh, I see a few other potters that do that. They keep things clean and I would prefer to have it clean. So anyway. Wipe those lids and the threads. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on here to textured turquoise on this particular one. And we're gonna put it on there pretty good around the top. All right. I'm gonna leave it in some splotchy places for a minute here. You see, I'm not putting it on real even. And I'll show you why I'm doing that here in a second. But I'm just dabbing this one. You know, and 
if you watch the video on the iron luster and all, it's kind of along the same line. You, you want things thicker to get it to do different things in some spots. You put those bands around it and then you cover it with something. So you have three layers here and two layers here. And with the flux glazes, of course, that just really makes a difference. See here, I'm leaving some bare spots. So I don't want to go all the way down. Uh, this is going to be at the top and it's going to run. And like I say, I'll show you the finished product. I have one here that's done when I get this finished so you can really see what it's going to do. Uh, this is on a real light color glaze. This is actually some of my recycled clay that has a lot of porcelain in it. And I like working with these light glazes because you get the colors that you want so many times differently. But you can see how that is. Don't want it to run down too much, so I'm just gonna wipe it away. I'm going to want more of that on the inside, so. Let's see how that's working out. Save that. Okay, that's what we got. Now we're going to grab a little wasabi. Wasabi is a celadon, and this seems to be an unopened jug. So, I must have finished off the last one. Here. And these celadons won't run unless you mix them with something that do. They're, they are stable. I'm a big fan of that when I want it to be stable, so. It says celadon on it, and if it's a like a C43 like this is, or a C something else, C1, it's not going to move. It's going to go right where you put it. So I'm going to take this on a little smaller brush, as you can see. Now these bare spots, I just want to put it in here. I'm going to dab it in so it's not... Yeah, we got some splotches. We'll get some, we'll get some real mix of colors in here by doing this. The green and the turquoise are gonna go together really neat. And uh, I love this combo. I'm a fan of it. I'm doing these soup bowls. I have a big bowl I'm gonna do similar to this. Uh, I know I've got a few other things that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to just almost do a kiln with this, this mix and just see how it, how it comes out. Open it with just almost every piece is being the same kind of mix here. 
All right, I'll put a little bit up there. And it's all just uh, however you want to do it, but it's neat. It's real neat to just I'm gonna do that on the inside. You're not gonna know exactly how it's gonna come out till it just comes out. There is a science to it sometimes, and sometimes it is just, you know what, play with it. we're going to come back with the, uh, the turquoise on top of it one more time and then it will just burn. Okay. That's good to go. Then we're going to jump back over here to our turquoise and we're going to put it on the top. Yeah, we've got that wasabi there. It's mixed in. And then we'll put one more coat of this textured turquoise in here. Like that. She's steamy. Ooh, she's hot. I think you're gonna like this. We're almost to the end, bear with me. So I really hate doing these longer videos, but you guys give me a comment. Let me know, uh, you know, I, I try to avoid these longer videos because I just don't wanna waste anybody's time. But if you want to see more of this, tell me. I'll do longer videos. I just, when I'm watching YouTube, I look for stuff that's quick and informative. And, you know, it's kind of like if you, if you cook and you get these online recipes and they want to give you this whole daggum story about why grandma did it this way and the Christmas of 19, you know, 99, blah, blah, blah. And the horse ran through the snow. It's like, just give me the recipe, you know? <laughs> that is that is me. I'm sure that's not everybody. Some people probably enjoy reading those stories and, and, you know, good for them. Maybe I'm just a little bit more impatient. But your comments determine what this channel is, and I do it for you. Uh, and if you want something different or you want to know something, ask questions, please. Tell me what you want. And if you, if you want to see more videos with more detail like this that are longer, I'm okay with that. I just, like I say, I just don't want to waste anybody's time and, and uh, run a bunch of long videos that nobody wants to watch. So, but it's all up to the viewer base. So there we go. As you can see, We've got River Burt, which is PCF 74. We've got three coats inside and out, basically. Uh, we've got our textured turquoise PC 25, and it's on the inside, not going all the way down with it, and on the outside. And then we've got splotches of our wasabi C43, and then we've come back and recoated it with that. And then the flux glaze that, that River Burt is gonna make this all run. And here is the finished product of the first set that I made. And if you can see that, see how it does on the inside. I mean, those, those are gorgeous. This is on porcelain, so this is a little bit darker clay. And, but man, you get those greens, uh, the browns mix in there with it. You get the turquoise. I just, I love this. 
And if you can't eat chili out of that, well, you know, you don't probably need to be eating chili. Just go get you some soup somewhere out of a cup. So anyway, there it is. Let me know what you think. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe and uh, give me comments. Let me know what you, what you want and what you don't want out of this channel. So thanks so much. Y'all have a great day. Later.